Good afternoon, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave, the CEO of MagnaWave. Uh, glad to be here with you for the afternoon edition of Office Hours on this Tuesday. We're here every Tuesday at 9 in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon to answer any questions that you may have about PEMF, how the devices are used, how the therapy works, various indications that could be addressed with sessions with MagnaWave PEMF. So we're here to answer your questions. So if you have questions, throw them up and we'd be happy to answer them at this point in time. We'd love to uh, visit with you and answer any questions that you may have today. Uh, to that end, I want to go over a couple of questions that I have uh, uh, received, and I want to uh, uh, go over them for you, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, one of the questions I received today, it said, uh, are there any negative, is there anything negative about this machine? Well, I can't say that there's anything negative about a particular device. I mean, the machine works well when it's used within the parameters that it is uh, normally dis uh, designated to be used within. It is an inflammation reduction device. It serves to help reduce inflammation, which will then reduce pain and allow the body to be in a better position to heal itself is basically um, the situation that we accomplish with this with this device. Negative, I can't say that there's there are no real, there are certainly contraindications with pacemakers, defibrillators, any other type of electronic device that may be implanted in the body. Uh, that, that a person may have. Certainly you don't want to use the machine around those types of, of situations. Um, so that's the one thing to certainly consider. You want to make sure that you don't have implanted devices or, or anything like that. But with that said, uh, the machine is certainly viable and can be used for a lot of uh, different situations. Um, what does it help? was the next question that this person would ask. Well, basically, by virtue of the function of what the machine does, inflammation reduction, oxygenation, it allows the cell walls to become more permeable, which means the cells can take on more oxygen. When you have well oxygenated cells, a lot of good things can happen. When a cell is well oxygenated, meaning bas basically it's very healthy. And, and uh, so it, if it's very healthy, it can better do its job. It can better allow the body to, again, better heal itself. So what does it help? It helps anything that a good, well oxygenated blood cell can do. Good, healthy blood cells take care of themselves. So that's the kind of the, the situation. I could be very specific and say, certainly, when you talk about inflammation reduction, you're talking about arthritis. We're talking about uh, surgeries. We're talking about injuries where there's been a stressed muscle or a stressed tendon or something like that that becomes inflamed and there's a lot of pain. It will certainly help any of those types of situations through the oxygenation and the inflammation reduction and the pain relief. Uh, but as a whole, anything that will improve with good oxygenation can be benef can receive benefit from a treatment as this or a session with a device that allows the body to be better oxygenated and thereby it better suited to for self healing uh, and then the next question that this person posed to me this morning uh, through a uh, chat message was, what if I do this and I spend the money and it breaks down after three years, what would happen then? Well, our devices come with a three-year warranty for sure, and we also, also offer an extended warranty, and the way I'll kind of explain the way our warranty works and how we, uh, how we apply it. Basically, most machines come with a warranty. We have a three-year warranty. It covers everything uh, about the machine with the exception of the coils. The coils are not covered because they can be left in the car, they can be damaged by a, a horse, or they can be damaged just by wear and tear. But the machine itself is covered it with you know total repair and replacement if something goes wrong. The coils, if there's a damage with, if there's an option with the coils because of a factory miss, uh, factory problem, the, the plugs weren't attached right and they came undone, certainly we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. If, if something happens, you've had a coil for two weeks and it totally falls apart, then we'll certainly replace that coil. But normal wear and tear of the coils means they're not covered by the warranty. Now, after the three years, what we do at MagdaWave is instead of charging annually for a warranty, uh, many companies have done that where they'll charge uh, $1,000 a year or $500 a year, and then if you have a problem with the machine, you send it in, but you need to up the warranty each year. What we prefer to do, and we'll do this for up to 10 years, is uh, we cover 
anything over the first $750 that you spend in any calendar year. So if you have the machine for after your third year, let's say your fourth and your fifth year, and nothing goes on and everything's fine, then all of a sudden there's a problem in the sixth year and we send it in and it's $500 to repair, that's your expense. If it's $900 to repair, you pay $750 of that initial repair. Nothing over and above that. And, and and only if you have that. So for the three years over your warranty that you had it with nothing going on, didn't spend any money. So that's how our extended warranty works at MagnaWave, and that's what happens after the three years if uh, if you wanted to do it. The last part, and I see we have a question. The last part of this lady's question was, what if I wanted to change machines? Well, certainly the machines could be traded in or they could be sold. They hold their value very well. There's machines on the market today that people paid $20,000, $21,000 for several years ago and they're still carrying a value currently. Can't say what's going to happen in the future because things do change uh, with different models and so on and so forth. But today those machines are carrying values of fifteen to $17,000 uh, in most cases and so that's a very easy um, easy thing to sell and, it, and they've held their value very well and we're very glad about that but that's kind of where it is today with regard to the values. All right, let's see. You've got a question. I have a mare that has uh, battled cellulitis in her hind legs for over eight years. I've been using the Max on her twice a week but haven't noticed any inflammation reduction. Is there more an aggressive approach for her? She is sound and with work the swelling goes down almost all the way, but the next day your hind legs are swollen again unless I wrap them. Well, certainly there's something going on anatomically uh, within the system that is impacting this type of situation. What you want to do, uh, what I would suggest, is that when you treat, what you say, treating twice a week, uh, perhaps after she works, you need to treat it very aggressively, maybe the first day or two after work so it stays flushed and it gets cleared out so it doesn't get a chance to build up as rapidly. So it comes down to uh, how you are approaching those types of situations uh, with the treatment. It certainly is a case in many indications if you have a problem to treat it once and then come back and treat it in three days, you're not really getting ahead of it initially. So it really depends on how you're treating. What I would recommend if you have that type of situation after the horse works and it's down would be to treat it for two or three days in a row to keep it from coming back and to work it in that situation. Once it's there, if you work the horse and all of a sudden it comes back the next day and then you're trying to get rid of it again, you want to try to get it before it gets a chance to reestablish itself would be the uh, situation that I would encourage uh, at that at that point wrapping is certainly a good thing that you can that you can do with this type of situation but if it if it's occurring after work unless you wrap then you know that there's something anatomically going on there and you want to try to stay ahead of it the other thing you could do is to treat potentially before work so that the flow is good at that point in time then after work maybe it won't be as much as an as much as an issue that is at that it has been. So again, you have to approach each situation differently. Uh, as I've said, what does this machine help? In an earlier question, it helps a lot of things that good, uh, good oxygenation will help, but every horse is different, every indication is different, and so you're going to have issues that are tougher for one horse than it is another. I would also make sure that if you're treating the back legs, you want to treat them, or the leg, wherever you're treating, you want to treat the whole leg and maybe the hips uh, or the shoulders of the horse, or even, even whether you consider doing a full body treatment just to make sure that everything is nourished throughout the body when this treatment occurs. So I hope that helps. Uh, with a very good question and it again it shows that we have to be diligent in what we're doing and how we're approaching each situation because each horse and client small animal or person it is certainly different uh, from one to the next so it's a very good question on that and I appreciate appreciate the question if you have any others uh, please present them I'd be happy to answer them for you at this time here's one about a mare uh, the, the person writes this poor mare has uh, let me see if I can pull it over here and we can get it uh, poor mare has a thin sole special wood screwed in, into her front hooves and oddly no blood flow uh, on the inside of her right front hoof the vet has no explanation so she's got two weeks 
She goes on to write, two weeks before the next vet visit, if it hasn't st stabilized and blood flow improved, he's basically saying that that's it for this horse. She just moved here and is not completely happy with what the vet is saying. Well, you know, the vets are going to make their assertion and as, uh, as they are professionally trained to do. Certainly, we aren't always happy with what we hear, but we have to pay attention and, and follow uh, what we hear. Um, and the vet says she can try MagnaWave or laser, but there is no scientific, scientific proof. Well, two issues there. Uh, there are plenty of studies that show the improved blood flow and the improved oxygenation and how, how the, this type of therapy can be addressed in the body as an energy applied to the body. There's all kinds of studies to document that. If someone is saying there's no study documented to this foot with this hoof with this problem, there's no scientific evidence saying that it will help that. And that is true. It's very difficult to get specific uh, situations or specific research when you're dealing with every little indication that happens to come along. But there is plenty of documentation and studies that certainly show the how this type of service can provide oxygenation and relief to those various situations. Now, in this case, uh, when you're talking about basically wanna, we want to improve blood flow, we want to improve blood flow to the area, so I would recommend a, a complete uh, body uh, session to help energize the whole body, to get all the blood in the body uh, ready to receive the oxygen that the body's going to provide for it, and let that help nourish the foot over the next two weeks. I would treat the, the foot, the ankle, the leg uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, you can't do it today and then do it another week and then expect things to change, but you could ag address it very aggressively. Now, what you want to do, the, the one difference between the MagnaWave and the laser is the laser does not penetrate bone well uh, and, and penetrate deeply in the bone. It certainly nourishes the area around the bone. MagnaWave, on the other hand, can very well penetrate the entire area to help with the oxygenation in the whole area. So I would be aggressive. Uh, in treating this particular issue. So over the next two weeks, hopefully you can get some uh, change and some reversal so the vet can see the value and what is there. But if it's an anatomical situation causing the problem, if there's a crushed area and a blood flow cannot get there because of constriction or whatever else is going on, you can't necessarily change that. And But if the vet has no explanation and they don't really understand what's causing it, then I would certainly take a look at it, treat it, and approach the area uh, aggressively to try to get circulation into the area to improve the situation overall. Good question again, and it's one of those things, that is, is it anatomical, is it a bruising issue, don't know, but uh, we need to take a look at that, and I hope, that, I hope this helps uh, with regard to that type of question and that type of situation. Uh, she'll try after work, see if there's a better result. Uh, would you wrap after? She, this is a lady talking about the cellulitis. Certainly, it is no problem to treat the area and then wrap after. Complementary uh, things done together often produce a very promising result. Uh, what is the difference between PEMF and shock wave therapy? Uh, Chris asks uh, on the Facebook page. Very good question. Difference between shock wave and PEMF. Shockwave is a therapy that is required in most states, in most cases, to be administered by a veterinarian. Uh, it is a device that basically goes into the area to stimulate blood flow into an area for the purpose of healing. Uh, shockwave machines are, in fact, when they say shock, they're not talking about electrical shock. They're talking about shock to the area, shock to the to the system. And so what they'll do, it, they'll use sound waves, they'll use compression, like a pumping compression cylinder type of thing that basically goes into the area and hits it. If you took your hand, you took your shoulder, and someone wrapped on your shoulder 50 times in varying strengths, to get blood flow to come to the area, that's what shockwave is doing. Shockwave has been shown to be very effective in specific indications over time. Some people like it, some people don't like it. We've had situations where a veterinarian will come in and they'll decide, I want to shockwave this horse. And when they're done with that and they're bringing uh, blood to the area by as a result of what they do, then we come in after and help prolong the blood flow and help enha further enhance the blood flow to the area as we go. 
MagnaWave, on the other hand, is not a compression device. In many situations with shockwave, sometimes they'll have to tranquilize the horse in order to do it so it's not in pain, so it doesn't cause pain or discomfort to the horse. With MagnaWave, what we're doing, both are producing massive amounts of energy that is absorbed into the body to help stimulate the area for improved blood flow with MagnaWave, improved oxygenation to the area, and then hopefully helping the area that's having a difficult time. MagnaWave is a magnetic field, so we produce a massive amount of energy with this uh, charge that's generated that penetrates all the way through. So when we, where you're shock waving, you may sh be shock waving right here to bring flow to the area. With MagnaWave, we're going through the entire area. It's penetrating the muscle, the soft tissue, the skin, the tendons, the, the uh, nerves. Everything is being nourished by this energy that's coming into the body. Passes right through the bone so it, it stimulates the cellular activity in the bone. So we're doing everything in the area to to try to help it. You might equate it to uh, if you're gonna if you have something on fire and you use a, a nozzle that's very sharp uh, bead of water coming out of it. Well, you got to move it all over. Whereas if you got a larger bead of water coming out like a flow like this, you cover more area more rapidly. And so that's kind of the difference between the MagnaWave and the shockwave therapy. Very good question. People ask that a lot. What is the difference between MagnaWave and shockwave or PEMF and shockwave? <clears throat> Two different modalities. They do sound the same. A lot of times you'll go into an area and someone will be using a shockwave and you'll hear it down the barn and it's pretty loud clicking sound like that. If ours was going that fast, you wouldn't hear it as much because that would be a lower signal, but you certainly would hear it with MagnaWave and that's the clicking sound. And so some people early on would get confused. Oh, they're MagnaWaving or oh, they're doing shockwave or oh, that's a shockwave device. In fact, we had that with the FEI at one time. They said, well, because it's clicking and it's doing this, it's gotta be shockwave. So we're gonna put it with the shockwave devices as far as our regulation is concerned here in the FEI type of uh, surroundings. So that is the primary difference between the two. And, um, and so you understand that that's the difference between magnetic PEMF therapy, MagnaWave therapy, and the shockwave therapy. Um, is MagnaWave illegal to use at FEI events? I saw something on this topic and want to make sure I know where it can be used and when. Good question again. The current regulation for pulsed electromagnetic field therapy in the FEI events is entirely up to the veterinarian in charge of the event. And that's been in place for a number of years, not only for our type of therapy, but for other therapies or other medica or other things that could be used. It's always been the final say up to the veterinarian in charge of the event. So if that veterinarian has a comfort level with a particular uh, device or whatever's going on and they want to allow these to be used as long as they're not on the excluded devices list uh, put out by the FEI, then it's okay to use. You may have veterinarians in charge that don't want to use outside therapies and you will have veterinarians who think it's fine. Uh, there have been cases over the years and I was saying, referenced this a couple of minutes ago, about six years ago, we went through a whole situation to where the FEI wasn't sure and some people wanted it and some people didn't want it. And the FEI came out and says, well, we're going to put it in the area of uh, lay of uh, shockwave therapy, so therefore you can't use it inside of these events, and we're going to put it, that in the rule book. Never happened. Never went in the rule book. Never was outlawed. Never was banned. It was strict. It became up to the veterinarians in charge of the events. So you would go to events like Rolex in Kentucky, or you'd go to Wellington, and again, you'd have, or wherever the horse show may be, and you'd have one veterinarian that would say, fine, you can use these things. Perhaps I'll have someone go with you, and I'll show you at what level you can use it in terms of the power output of the device, and then they would say, fine, you do it over here, you do it at this level, and you can, you can use this in FEI situations. The new rulings that they're talking about next year, taking place in 2018, 
is that there will be a Gauss limitation on how much power a device can put out in order to be allowed to be used in FEI situations. And, and frankly, I think that's fine. If you, know, you can do whatever you want up until when you go into the FEI, and then if you have another device or something, a device that's controllable that you can show it can be fixed at this level, then I would assume they will allow it to go as long as it meets the power requirement requirements that they will allow to be used in an FEI type of environment. That's what they're saying will take place next year. They're saying 1,000 Gauss. It would be the maximum delivery intensity of a device to be used in FEI uh, areas. And there are ways for many of these devices to be governed, if you will, to fit that type of criteria. So I think it's something that, that will need to be worked out with the with the FEI and, and what devices will be allowed, and that will make it very cut and dried. After that, it's it really won't be up to the veterinarian in charge anymore. It's going to be allowed. And, and, you know, a vet could say, I don't believe in, in laser therapy at all, so I don't want any laser devices. I suppose that could still be. But it, typically, if something is, is marked as allowed and usable, then that's how it will play. So we'll just have to see how that, how that works out. Back in, in 2007, when this first happened, uh, I was in Wellington. I met with the veterinarians in charge. We did sample treatments. We, I was in contact with the people in Switzerland. I had my doctors. Uh, Dr. Pollock pr participated in this. Uh, Dr. Dennis from NASA participated in our, in our letters and literature that we provided. And so we were there with all these types of discussions, and they, at that point in time, for a few week period, or maybe a month or so period of time, they said we were like um, a shockwave, and they wouldn't listen to any explanations. And frankly, they put, they came back to us and said, if you show this, then you show that, then you can, uh, you can use this equipment. And that's fair, except what they were asking for was stuff that is more stringent and, and requiring more investment and more money than what it cost in many cases to get a device FDA approved. And so the, the levels that they were asking us to go financially were not feasible. To, to do that. So anyway, so we're worried. We were scared to death that, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to use that right now in the FEI uh, areas for competition. Uh, and we thought, oh, that's that's the end of the deal. And But what happened was it's also a testament to how well things work, that if they want to regulate, and it's, it's, they don't exclude things because they don't, because they're dangerous, so they don't exclude things because they, they uh, think that they they don't work, a lot of times they will say you can't do this because we want everybody to be on the same playing field. We want the playing field to be level, and so we want, if we do this, then everybody's the same. We don't want to say that there's somebody here that doesn't have one of these devices or can't afford a laser or can't do this, that all of a sudden we're saying that someone else gets an unfair advantage because they're using this. Or, or, and that can be in drugs. There are drugs that you can use uh, on your horses before the FI, FEI event that you have to stop using so many days prior or before you go into the area for competition. doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that you can't use it in this time frame in this area. So what we found is more and more people were using our equipment after the FEI to help their horses recover, help them remain healthy, and to, uh, from that whole perspective, or they'd use them prior, right up until the time that they went, and then they would do something different during the FEI time to keep things in check so their horses remained healthy and able to compete in the manner with which they uh, wanted them to be able to compete. So that's where we are with the FEI today. It's different today than apparently it's going to be in uh, 2018, but we'll have to see how that uh, uh, totally plays out and, and if these uh, laws are in fact uh, enacted or these rules are enacted uh, in the FEI. And then there's many, there's the USEF and then there's the CDI, various regulatory boards that, that work over dressage or western horses or other disciplines of horses that, that people are in. And they're, and they're all working, you know, in the thoroughbred world, so for example, there's a whole big thing about medications and what's allowed and what's not allowed. There are racetracks around the country uh, with our type of equipment, and frankly, any type of magnetic equipment cannot be used race day, for example. You can do it the day before, but not race day. 
Uh, some places, they don't want things, they want at least to be six to ten hours out. So if the races are at night, you can do something in the morning, as long as you're documenting and, and follow all the various regulations. But there are rules, and there are good reasons for these rules, for, for people who may try to get an unfair advantage and may try to take advantage of the various regulations and uh, that are available to them, and so that's that's why we do this. And that's why the rules are there. But that answers your question on the FEI. Great questions. I uh, appreciate you asking them. Uh, so please, if you have questions, uh, please post them, and I will uh, be more than happy to address them for you um, at this point. And let's see, we've covered uh, so far the initial questions I received after this morning's um, after this morning's office hours. Be happy to uh, answer some other ones. If you have them, please uh put them up there, and I'd be happy to answer them for you at this time. We have several people visiting with us um, this afternoon. I appreciate that, and I always look forward to having a chance to uh, talk with you about what's going on. The regulations, you know, that that's a heck of an area that, that needs to be discussed and figured out how it's, how it's going to go, but certainly I think everybody agrees that, that regulations are good. The problem is when you come down to decide what can be used and what can't be used, I mean, as you well know, there's a lot of equipment out there, and people make claims as to what their equipment will do, and then people ask questions about what happens with... Um, if it's used this time or that time, and so we have all of that uh, type of thing. We have a question that came in, a question from Shelley. My clients uh, love the newspapers that we were published. Will there be more editions available? Uh, what she's talking about is uh, MagnaWave uh, uh, papers. We have what we call the MagnaWave News and Views uh, that is available. And it is basically, we took the website, uh, we did this uh, for the Amish community. We have a lot of machines in the Amish community around the country uh, and because it's more of a natural type of medicine or natural type of application of treatment, and they like that. Uh, it's kind of interesting because they don't use a lot of electric power and, and things like that, but they can use generators. They can use battery power, so they'll use batteries from their cars or the car battery, or they will have generators to provide treatments into the Amish community. Well, if they don't use telephones and they don't use computers, we needed a way to get them the information about MagnaWave and what it does. And so we developed this newspaper, MagnaWave News and Views, that is available to anyone now, and practitioners like them because it covers, uh, and we do have a new edition coming out. We're on our second edition of the um, one that covers everything. We have a newspaper now that covers small animals, humans, uh, equine uh, treatments, and equine services provided uh, by the practitioners. It's excellent. to I've got some of it. I'd grab one, show it to you. Uh, But it's uh, excellent, excellent reading, and it works out very well. The next edition, so we'll have two editions. We'll have one that covers all three, and then we'll have an edition that is specifically geared towards the human market. Uh, So doctors can have them or practitioners can have them available for their clients to read and keep up with what uh, with what's going on and what they want to what they want to follow. Uh, It's an excellent resource. And if you don't have any and and you want some, uh, give us a call at the office uh, 502-742-7868. And we'd be happy to uh, uh, send you a copy of the newspaper so you could uh, have a look at them and uh, um, use them in your in your practice or however you see fit to use them. Great question. uh, And thanks uh, for asking the question, Shelley. Uh, let's see. So we were talking about the the uh, various regulations for for competitions and, and the like that that are in place. Uh, if you have another question about that, I'd be happy to to address that. Um, trying to think if there's I've had any other questions the last couple of days that I've been asked that I would like to approach at this time. Certainly, we always get questions about frequency and low power versus high power and what works and what doesn't work and what's new. You know, there, there, there's a, um, a question that, that some people have discussed, and, you know, you get there's a lot of information out there, and, and people will, will do a lot of, uh, they'll say a lot of things, and, and uh, Dr. Dennis just recently uh, published an article that I'm going to uh, 
go over and present to you in sections because it's a very long article and we want to cover cover it section by section. But one of the things that, that he addresses is that there's, a, there's so much information out there that you want to make sure that you're, number one, that you're dealing with somebody that's been around for a while, someone that's reputable, someone that will answer your questions when you ask them and uh, give you the answers that you want. If someone tells you they have the secret and they have the magic frequency to make this work or the magic setting to make that work, then you need to do your research. And I'm not saying that someone hasn't developed something or someone may not develop something, but you know, it, you need to understand that, that everything has its limitations, but everything also has wide expectations and wide opportunity to provide good results for you. So certainly do your homework and, and ask questions and that's one of the reasons that we're here is to be as transparent as possible to answer the questions. As you know, there's questions been answered to ask today about how do I need to make it work better and what do I do about this situation that I'm not getting the result that I want and we want you to know that it's it's a very viable for, uh, very viable uh, product to use and but everything has its challenges when we get right down to it. Let's see uh, some papers from the beginning of this year uh, are these new? Well, we've the second, first, and second versions. There's not a lot of change between the two. We made a couple of changes in the two, but the basic information uh, is the same. When we have the interviews from the various doctors who are in the papers, and we talk about the uh, some of the indications and things that that these types of sessions can be used to address when it comes to the uh, paper, and that's a that's a good question. Uh, just to give you a little background here on where we're going with, with some of the marketing services uh, that we're providing for our practitioners and people who use this uh, in, their, in their business um, as, as we go. And we, one of the things that we're applying now is uh, we want to be able to enhance the people that, that you reach out to with basically commercials that are directed to your locality and, and your time. And so when someone watches this, your name automatically appears if you're a practitioner uh, in that particular area. And those commercials uh, went actually uh, are live as of this morning. We gave the final approval on those. That can be uh, used by the practitioners in their practice to uh, help promote their business. And uh, we're doing a lot to develop things in that area to be generally helpful uh, to you or to anybody who wants to utilize this mm -hmm. as a business. And we're, we're certainly available to answer those questions. A lot of people have questions about, well, what am I going to do to build my business or how can I make that happen? And um, we want to help answer those questions and do, and do that to uh, make that available to you for your business growth. We like to think that we're, we're testing ads. We're doing, uh, we're doing various uh, ads that we're using on Facebook and various uh, other social media sites are on Google or Bing to see what works. Where do we get the best response so that we can tell you that information so you can utilize some of these same types of tactics to build your business. Uh, and you know we don't want smoke and mirrors. We want, uh, we want things that are viable and straightforward uh, with regard to the information that you might disseminate to your uh, to your customers and clients uh, as you head down the road, so um, uh, thanks for the question, Shannon. Uh, any other questions, folks? Would be happy um, to address them. I was just thinking, uh, uh, Shannon was asking a question, and she asked a question um, yesterday, and I can't remember exactly what I, I knew what I wanted to address, but I can't remember the question off the top of my head, and I don't have it right here in, in front of me. So uh, uh, dealing with specific indications that people might might deal with. So if you have a question, uh, please uh, throw it up there and I'd be happy to uh, take a look at it at this point. So we've been on for about 40 minutes now and uh, we want to answer any questions that you may have. I do want to point out that one of the things we're doing with these MagnaWave office hours is that after they're completed, it takes a little time to finish this, but we go through and we review each one of the office hour segments and then we, we what we call uh, chapterize them to where we can put at two minutes we talked about this, at four minutes we talked about that, at six minutes we talked about this question and answer, and then what we do is we put that on there so if you go to YouTube to the MagnaWave channel and you pull up these videos, the um, uh, 
office hours, you can you can go below the video and it has a total chapterization of what's on that video. So if you want to hear about a foot, if you have questions about foot issues and you see that we talked about a foot issue, you can click that link and it'll take you right to that part of the video. So you're searching for help and assistance and what you're doing will cert will be there uh, in the in the channel that's on YouTube for the for the MagnaWave channel. We want to help you have this stuff to your disposal uh, as soon as we possibly can uh, as we as we create this content and provide it provide it to you. Um, been it, interesting. Some great questions today about FEI and and that type of information. So I'll wait another minute or so. I don't want to. Uh, to hang around. If you've got other things to do, I certainly have stuff that I need to be doing, but I do want to answer any questions that you may have when we're when we're here. We enjoy being here. I enjoy answer the, answering the questions, but I don't want to hold everybody up and, and uh, keep us from getting about what we uh, need to do and cover. So it looks like everything uh, is kind of quiet at this point. I want to uh, thank you folks for, for being with me today, and we'll be back next Tuesday. Ah, let's talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, webinar on Thursday. Uh, the webinar, MagnaWave Wellness uh, webinar, will be Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern this week um, because of our guest. Uh, our guest will be Eric Wong from Ananda Hemp. Uh, and we will be discussing uh, all the aspects of the hemp products, the CBD products that are available in the health market today for people to use. Uh, we have people that have used hemp products in, in, as complementary products to the MagnaWave products and how it works. Uh, people get into alternative medicines and integrative medicines, and they want to know how various things can be used in conjunction with other products. And so uh, Eric will be on with me. He'll be in California, and I'll be here in uh, lovely Kentucky. He'll probably be warmer than I am. It's, it's kind of turning a little chilly here, but that's okay. But we'll be talking about uh, the Ananda hemp products. They've been forerunners in setting up the national legislation in the United States that makes it legal to export hemp from Kentucky to any state in the country. He'll be dealing with where they are on the professional regulations to uh, make these products legal uh, in uh, every use for every type of position. He'll explain the products as where they are on the full spectrum uh, hemp is a is part of the uh, cannabis area, but they are not cannabis, and I guess you could call it cannabis, but they are non-THC producing plants, and all of that will be uh, covered um, during that time on the webinar. So it'll be Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Tune in. Uh, we'll have links up for you to get notified about the webinar if you'd like to learn more about these types of products and how they may be, be beneficial to you or your clients. We'll certainly be discussing that at that time. Okay, we have another question here. Going to treat a one-year-old Mastiff with extreme bilateral elbow pain or could be panositis, uh, panositis, panositis, uh, what recommendation would you give to treat him? Well, so certainly if he's having elbow pain, uh, you want to treat the area. I would treat the whole shoulder, elbow, probably the whole body type of thing on, on a Mastiff. Uh, uh, use the mat or the large loop over the, over the top of the body, the top line. But my treatment regimen would be put it on and treat it. I would treat it at a moderate, comfortable setting for six to eight minutes to see how it does, to see if that improves the mobility and the function, and then potentially do it again in that same routine to see how he does the second time. Typically, when we approach situations like this, you may treat them twice a day initially or three or four days in a row to get a whole, uh, to get what I call being ahead of the pain, and then you can uh, see how it's going to hold from from that point on, but certainly um, a couple of treatments like that, three or four treatments, see how the how the response is. It's not unusual for you to treat an area like that and see some instant improvement of mobility, and improvement of how the the animal will react to to what we were doing. But that basically, this is one of the things that obviously, if it's pain, it's got a, a inflammation related to it. Regard not knowing what's causing it could be a strain, a pull, a separation of some of some point that some type that needs to heal, but I would treat the area, like I said, six to eight minutes 
uh, pretty aggressively the first few times, and I say aggressively once or twice a day or three or four days in a row to give us a chance to get ahead of it. To treat it once, can you see an immediate result? Yes. Uh, will it come back pretty quickly? It can, depending on uh, where it's coming from, what the initial uh, situation with it uh, may have been. So good question, and but that's how I would go about treating it. And that's the thing about most everything you do. Uh, people will ask a question, well, it's in the elbow and it's this. Does that make it different than something that's in the back or in the hip? No. It's an inflammation situation that we need to try to get after the inflammation, get relief, get comfort so the body can better help itself. I, I always say, and I apologize for being a bit redundant in this, we treat as often as we need to for as long as function continues to improve. And, and then we treat, once they read a plateau, reach a plateau, we treat as often as necessary to maintain that plateau. If that means maintaining that there is no pain and everything is great, perfect. Maybe you only need to do it once a month. But if it's a situation that you need to treat every week, to keep the everything in check and everything going well, then that's what you need to do. You need to let the let the person or the animal tell you uh, how they're doing and and what's going on, and um, so uh, that's the best way to approach those situations. Kelly says, "Thank you very much. We will be videoing it uh, from the start point. That's great. I uh, always recommend that. That way we can see." Uh, if you want to send it to me so we can see what settings you're using, we can see um, uh, how the dog responds, uh, that whole type of thing. I had a situation one time, and just quickly here before we go, uh, unless you have another question, put it up, and I'd be happy to, to answer it. We were treating a horse that the horse looked like it was in a lope the whole time, the neck down, just kind of always strolling along. And so I told them how I thought they should... Uh, treat the neck of the horse on both sides uh, with sessions to hopefully relieve things and to to help it be um, be better. And, uh, and they wrote me back said we're really not seeing the relief that we want. And I said, would well, do me a favor, shoot a video please, and send it to me and let me take a look at it and see if I can see anything. Maybe that that uh, you're just not seeing as as you go through it. And they did. They sent me the video. And and so as as we have, if I can show this here. If you have this being the, the neck we have of a horse, we have the, the spine running down the center of the neck, but yet up here is the mane. And so as they were treating the horse, they were a little high. They were a little above the, the uh, spinal area, the neck area of the horse. And what I noticed was some pulpitate, pulsating down here. And so I said, here's what you need to do. Come down. You see that pulsating which they didn't notice because they were up here and they really weren't looking too low. I said, treat that area and all around it where you're seeing the pulsating. And that's what they did. And then they treated the whole area. And bingo, within a couple, two or three treatments, the horse began to be looser and raise his neck up and lift his neck and carry himself in a more normal uh, gait and, and uh, uh, situation. And so you just have to really look sometimes for where you're going with things. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, we look forward. To, the office just responded. We look forward to seeing that video. Uh, it would be fun to see that and see how things how things progress. So uh, we really do appreciate the questions today, some very good questions, and um, always enjoy that. Um, it, it's interesting to me sometimes because I'll see questions and I, ooh, it takes me a second to, <laughs> to think through things and, and, uh, and certainly, as you know, if you have a question for us and I don't have the answer, and I don't have all the answers, I have answers that I'm familiar with. I know the overall operation of this machine inside and out. But there are things, and there's times that we need to think them through and to see what ramifications could be there or what could be uh, exacerbating a particular situation. And in many cases, we pick up the phone and call a doctor or call a veterinarian or a chiropractor and say, look, this is the question that was asked. What do you think? How would you approach this? And that's how we learn, and we share this stuff here, and we also share it on our private uh, group forum on our Facebook page. We have a private forum for people who become MagnaWave certified where they can go in with 250-plus other practitioners and ask a question. Well, I have this situation that I'm treating. What should I do? Whether it's a person, small animal, or a horse. We want to, uh, this biology is biology, physiology is physiology, and so if we can help situations, that's certainly uh, what we want to do. So great questions today, folks. I've really enjoyed it, and uh, we look forward to being back with you. Don't forget Thursday, 11 o'clock, I'll be with Eric Wong. 
from Ananda Hemp discussing the CBD products and answering any questions that you may have about these types of products and where they are in the marketplace. It's a growing industry and there's a lot of people asking questions. A lot of people are asking us questions, which is why we want to bring it to you on the MagnaWave Wellness uh, platform so you can learn uh, in, from not only PEMF but other modalities and other uh, things that can be beneficial to your health and wellness as we explore that in the MagnaWave Wellness Arena. So thanks for being here. I look forward to uh, visiting with you again on Thursday and then again next Tuesday. Uh, have a great day and uh, enjoy your MagnaWaving. Bye. <music>